Hello and welcome for a in-between video and I'm playing again Kerbal Space Program with the same save that I had before just continuing on I just really wanted to play again and oh my god that's brightening I um, was trying to build a very heavy um, transporter for deep space and I wanted to make it look cool and I wanted to make it practical and I wanted to use antimatter because I finally got that going and it took me a while to figure it out how it worked but I think I finally managed it. So I designed this heavy lander which has two antimatter reactors installed which gives me over 140 gigawatts of power and uh, here on the sides we have the cargo bays which are the wide cargo bays it's uh, 10 meters long each side and uh, we have one main thruster in the back it's a 2.5 plasma thruster and here on the sides we have landing thrusters because I want this lander to be able to land on non-atmospheric planets and somehow the thruster was all the way down on these all right and um, yeah the main engine is back here we also have a warp drive if we want to go to different planets but as I said before this is a lander that is uh, going up to space and will never return to any atmosphere the thing is since we need uh, antimatter for it I had some antimatter brought down and this is my antimatter fueler that I have right here which stores all the antimatter I bring back from space and we're just gonna load up the transport here and this is just a test flight for this vehicle if it works fine I'm gonna leave it in orbit for the first mission that I'm gonna take it on to but right now this is just a test flight and uh, yeah you here, here we go all of this is fast forwarded because otherwise it took me I think two hours for it to test it properly but I got it going straight upwards because of ferrum airspace it wouldn't let me launch it uh, horizontally so I have to launch vertically but with the help of RCS and SAS I managed to keep it stable because if I just the nose wants to go down just a tiny little bit because of all the uh, graphene heat sinks I have installed and they don't really work with uh, the atmosphere that well and once we reached the high enough altitude to get out of space I switched over from argon to the plasma vacuum uh, fuel which is actually no fuel at all so while in space this craft does not require any fuel whatsoever it only requires electricity and here you can see the cargo base that I've built it has three docking ports two small ones and one big one which should allow me to transport everything I need and here I was just testing if everything worked as I intended because when you copy and paste sometimes the action groups don't take over and you have to redo them and here was just making sure that all of this works so yeah we got into a stable orbit and now we're gonna make a test flight to the moon now the thing is the plasma vacuum thrust has the same uh, thrust amount that liquid fuel would give me but I also have four tanks of argon with me I needed them to get uh, out of Kerbin's uh, atmosphere because the plasma vacuum only works in as it's called vacuum so I needed some kind of fuel to get me out into space that is actually quite powerful or has a high thrust value and argon was the best way to go all right and since we have a um, warp drive installed we're gonna go to the moon with the most direct way possible we're just gonna line ourselves and hit it there we go and let's yeah let's kind of fix this a little bit so we don't crash with high velocity into the moon not planet well it is a planet but what's actually the definition of when you call something a planet unless it's a moon well I'm gonna look that up later 
However, just warp drive once more, and now we only have to fix our orbit. And we just wait until we hit periaps, and then we're just accelerating it. And here is when the files corrupted, and I was missing um, the material to show you guys how I got from orbit down to where I'm here. This is already the landing process. <laughs> Skip the head, the most important part. Nah, the landing part was actually the most important part because I wanted to know if this thing can land. So aligning uh, the thrusters a certain way so you can actually just accelerate without the thing trying to tilt forward or backward or anything is actually quite hard. And this is the, my first try where I could actually make this work. But as I descended towards the moon, I realized that this is not the best place to land. So. I just kind of freaked out, hit everything I could, and accelerated. And um, this thing weighs around 200 tons when completely fueled. Now that I used all of, of the argon fuel, it is actually a little bit lighter. But it still handles like a brick. As you can see, it's trying to tilt over and trying to work against it. And for the landing here, I actually have to use a lot of uh, monopropellant. But. I actually managed to get it stable again. All of this is actually time accelerated due to the fact that um, I have so many parts, this ship has so many parts that the game starts to slow down and lag a little bit. But for your convenience I accelerated it. And yeah, I'm trying to slowly go down and land. Now this thing should technically then be able to transport a lot of stuff within the Kerbin system and even to other planets. The only thing, as I said before, it will not be capable of will be landing on atmospheric planets, even though it might be able to land on Duna because it has such a uh, light atmosphere or very... Um, the density of the atmosphere is not that high, I should be able to land on it. But I don't really think I want to try it, just because uh, Ferrum Aerospace tends to rip things apart now with the updated version. And um, But yeah, all of the other planets should be possible, and especially if I load up, uh, refuel this thing with Argon, it should technically be even able to fly, land on Tylo and leave Tylo. If you've seen one of my previous... Um, videos you know how hard of a time I had with Tylo. So maybe this thing would be more capable of handling the situation. Well and here you see me using RCS to slow down my horizontal No 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 warp drive warp drive stayed on warp drive stayed on and here it's kinda dancing with its legs back and forth back and forth until we come to a complete stop. Well, the test was successful, and um, now it's just time to get back to Kerbin. So I used up, I started with uh, 20,000 units of antimatter, and this entire endeavor of getting up into space and getting to the moon and getting into a stable orbit took me 5,000 units of antimatter. Now, probably one of the next. Uh, missions I want to do is get some antimatter collectors to jewel for finally having a an really efficient antimatter um, farm where I can fly back and forth and collect all the antimatter I need because antimatter is fun and you can do cool stuff with it and yeah so the main engine has just with the vacuum plasma a, th a thrust for almost around 4000 kilonewton and it still only gives me 1G of acceleration, so you can kind of imagine how heavy this ship is. But yeah, that's about it. We're just gonna get into a stable orbit, and yeah, the test flight was successful. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and maybe I'm gonna mess around with this ship fairly soon again. Because